This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine, Vice President at JSA, and welcome to JSA TV. Today we're getting to know a little bit more about Data Vision. And with us in the virtual studio, we have Data Vision's uh, uh, COO, Mr. Mark Abolafia. Mark, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you, Dean. Great to be here. Outstanding. So we're going to jump right in here, Mark. Um, for our viewers that don't already know, why don't you tell us a little bit about DataVision? Sure, love to. So DataVision is a network engineering and consulting firm. Uh, we're involved in the architecture and implementation of software-defined networking and network functions virtualization, along with other solutions that are uh, related to things such as SD-WAN uh, and BSS-OSS integration. Uh, we're headquartered in New Jersey. We've got folks across the United States and Canada. And basically, we help our clients to build their networks and help develop the software and integrate it to make it all work together with them. Outstanding, Mark. Thank you very much. Okay, so I know, and I think that uh, uh, that uh, we you, you announced you made had a bit of a soft announcement about a recent partnership. That partnership being with um, 128 Technology. Now, this partnership allows you you folks to offer additional solutions such as SD WAN, as you mentioned, uh, Secure Cloud, Interconnect, among other things. So, um, why don't you tell our viewers a bit more about that partnership? Sure, love to. So 128 Technology is a uh, relatively young company. Uh, they've been around two or three years, and uh, they have developed a really interesting way to do SD-WAN, uh, amongst other methods of routing. So um, not only we partnered with 128, uh, but we also have a, a couple of different partnerships of other SD-WAN vendors to fill out the portfolio. But something interesting about 128 caught our attention, and that is the actual way that they uh, – implement uh, software-defined uh, WAN solutions, and that is um, something that realizes a what they call a zero-trust um, connectivity paradigm or security paradigm, and what they do here is base that connectivity on sessions rather than just uh, an encrypted VPN. So what they do is they start out with this assumption that nothing is secure on the network, and using a session-based uh, routing protocol of their own design, um, that actually provides the security uh, for folks using the network. So that's uh, something we're really excited about. Obviously, they are as well. And uh, as a company, they've gained some really great traction in the marketplace. Um, so when we combine that solution with some of our other software-based orchestration solutions, it's a really interesting way to uh, put together not only the SD-WAN overlay that a lot of folks are using, but also an ability to orchestrate that with existing network infrastructure, whether you're a telco provider or uh, a large enterprise looking to, to get into uh, SD-WAN. So that whole particular um, method of routing is something that is – I'd like to say revolutionary, but it's more evolutionary in the way people are approaching things these days. So we're excited to bring that into the portfolio. Outstanding. Okay, so I'm going to go off a script because you, you started the conversation going this way. Um, you and I, before we, before we started recording, we're talking a, a little bit about um, SDN and NFV and about how um, just a few years ago it was a science experiment, and now it's a real living, breathing thing, and folks like Data Vision are, are actually deploying and implementing these, these technologies. So now that it's a real living thing, um, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about where it's actually going from here. Sure. So it's <laughs> that that's a pretty broad question. So I'll try to be as specific as possible. Um, so every major telco um, has adopted different forms of software-defined networking or network functions virtualization. All the tier one players uh, have programs in place where they've either operationalized it, such as AT&T and Verizon and CenturyLink. Uh, lots of folks in European theater have done it as well, um, Telefonica, uh, Telecom Italia, et cetera. Um, you know, there's a lot of leadership out there already um, in SDN slash NFV. Um, Operationalizing it has been a great challenge because you now have to graft all this into your existing BSS OSS systems. But the other piece of it is how do you actually provide uh, services at the edge or uh, on the customer prem? And the place where a lot of this NFV has been going to is uh, the universal CPE or customer prem equipment and the uh, revolution in white box technology, meaning it used to be very expensive to put a router on every site. Obviously, people are looking at um, 
ARM or x86 based white boxes on which to plant these uh, network functions and that's driving down the cost to deploy uh, all this hardware but also it's allowing a huge amount of flexibility in what kind of services you can now offer to a particular customer all embedded in software and where this is all headed or where it is heading or where it's arrived in certain places is that I can now make a change to a service at a customer literally in uh, minutes or hours versus the weeks and months that it typically used to take uh, back in the bad old days three or four years ago. So that's kind of where it's been and where it is heading to. Um, you know, other technologies that folks are looking at are things such as edge computing, uh, more of the SD-WAN that we spoke of, and, and things of that nature. So um, you're going to see a lot more change other than just the, the, the marquee uh, title of SDN and NFV. Awesome. Okay, so you brought up edge computing. I know that that is something that uh, Data Vision is well versed in. Why don't you tell our, our viewers a bit more about edge computing and kind of how it fits into the larger um, product suite that you folks have? Sure. So with respect to edge computing, there are lots of people's uh, definitions of this. And from where we sit, there are, I would say, one or two, well, more like two ways that, that we consider what, what edge computing is. The first is if you look at what the uh, traditional content distribution network looked like, you were looking at uh, a number of servers and lots of storage uh, pushed out as far to the network edge as possible in different co-locations, um, different uh, data centers in high-density metropolitan areas, uh, or basically where the content was consumed or as close to it as possible. So edge computing uh, helps with that particular uh, use case in that uh, instead of just streaming video from a central location, you now have those compute resources and a lot of the intelligence pushed further out in the edge. So when it comes to uh, edge computing, that's one area that folks are looking at and what some folks, depending on where they sit, whether it's a, a data center operator or someone of that nature, would consider what edge computing is. The second paradigm of edge computing, which I think is going to eclipse that uh, in about a year and a half plus as uh, things accelerate in 5G deployment, is in the um, fiber densification trends that you're seeing in places like New York and Boston and all the larger cities where, yes, there's fiber, but it's nowhere near at the density um, that is needed for the kinds of services that 5G is going to offer. Therefore, you have folks who are laying a tremendous amount of fiber in these metro areas, but in order for applications and the actual 5G services to work properly, you, cannot, you can no longer have all of your compute back in a data center, even if it's two or three. In. So in a place like Manhattan, where you've already got a high level of uh, fiber density, that still isn't even enough to accommodate what's coming in 5G. So you have the density that's not quite there yet, and there are plenty of folks who are doing that, but you also have the compute power in order to accommodate the performance of the applications that are going to be riding on 5G. Therefore, the combination of fiber densification and the ability to push that compute resource out as far to the edge as possible, perhaps even to the street corner level, is what's going to make 5G fly. So the ability to create these edge computing um, mini data centers is what's going to help uh, realize that 5G application everywhere vision. And there's a whole other hour of you know, JSA TV interviewing about what applications 5G can bring you, but that's the, the quick and dirty answer for, you know, what else edge computing can do for you. So that's what I've got. Out, outstanding. Honestly, I feel like we pro probably could be uh, talking all afternoon at, the, at this rate. Um, Lots of things to pull on that sweater. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, this, was, this was brilliant. Thank you very, very much for being here. Um, for folks who want to learn more about um, SDN and NFV and edge computing and data vision, where should they go? They should go to datavision-inc.com, datavision-inc.com, or they can simply email us at info at datavision-inc.com, or if you're going to be in sunny Miami, or at least we hope it'll be sunny, um, on, on January 29th through 31st, uh, we'll be at Metro Connect, and we've got a small seating area right outside the main conference room there. If you want to swing by and chat for a couple of minutes, uh, I'll be there, and I'm happy to uh, talk to you about you know, some of our reference work that we've done and uh, for whom we've done it and see what we can do for you. Awesome. I know I'm going to be there, so I'm looking forward to meeting you um, in person. So thanks again very much, Mark. We appreciate having you.
Great. Thanks, Dean. Pleasure to be here. You bet. You bet. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon. Thank you.